Thank um, everyone for coming out uh, this afternoon for this uh, issue of, of, of critical importance uh, to uh, the um, health, life, and safety of the people who live in Allen Benedict Court. The, um, um, you all know the unfortunate news of, of, of losing two lives here um, uh, just uh, two nights ago to uh, uh, a gas leak. Um, I'm going to defer to Chiefs Holbrook and, and, uh, and Jenkins to get into some of the details um, as we know them and can share them with you. Uh, but uh, based on their work, uh, we've determined uh, that uh, this gas leak is, is, uh, is not only significant but consistent throughout this property. And it's, uh, it, it is in uh, their best judgment and our best judgment um, supporting their decision 100% uh, that this property should be closed. Um, uh, we will be closing uh, uh, this property immediately, working with the housing authority on relocating the, the, the citizens who live here uh, to safe and, and suitable housing, uh, some that might eventually be, be permanent, uh, but, but, but certainly right now temporary housing in which these families uh, can live um, safe and secure. Uh, this is um, indeed a, a, an issue of, of of, of significant public importance. It is, uh, it's trying on our souls and our hearts. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that these babies, like the one-year-old that I held here today, and some of the seniors who needed their medication and were displaced, uh, that they are able to live uh, the quality of life that they deserve. Uh, we're going to do every single thing we possibly can. We're very closely, already working closely with other public agencies. Uh, as well as uh, several of our friends in the, in, the, in the private sector, in the hospitality industry, to make sure that we can uh, help folks get settled uh, as soon as possible with as little disruption to their lives as possible. Um, this obviously is an ongoing and developing story. Uh, I'm going to defer to Chief Holbrook and, 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 uh, and Chief Jenkins and, and, and City Manager if she chooses to participate in. But, uh, each of our um, council people, we've been uh, been kept fully aware and apprised of everything. Uh, Councilman McDowell was out here late at night and early this morning engaging uh, with citizens here. Uh, uh, and we're going to remain engaged. Um, please, uh, any questions you have, I'd ask maybe we'll wait till the end and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to answer every the, all of them as best as we can at, at this moment. So, uh, Chief, Chief Jenkins, uh, Chief Obrook, please. I'll be brief, and, and just to rehash yesterday, um, as we all know, we, we uh, responded uh, as part of a, a med medical emergency response, um, found two unresponsive people that were pronounced deceased. They were unattended, so um, until we can determine otherwise, we view that as um, suspicious. Um, we do not suspect foul play at this point. Um, so our role is limited to that. However, we do have code enforcement that's uh, under our purview as well, and code enforcement has been working in tandem with uh, fire officials to methodically go through each each one of the units. Um, we're looking for life safety issues and, and property maintenance issues, and we have found a number of, uh, of issues that we think are inconsistent with the livability expectations we have for our citizens. And I'll let Chief Jenkins elaborate um, on the role of the fire department um, and what will continue to happen today here. Um, thank, thank you all for being here. Um, basically what we're looking at, we are looking at those life safety issues. And out of the abundance of caution and just because we view it as some type of imminent danger um, to life, um, that these buildings are being evacuated. Um, as we went through building after building, we discovered once we searched one, uh, checked one building, we discovered that we had multiple units out here that had gas leaks uh, from the stove, from the hot water heater, um, things of that nature. Um, so we're going to be precautious in what we're doing and making sure that the lives of, of these citizens are, are, are good. Um, so the decision was made by Chief Holbrook and myself with the support of our city manager um, to go ahead and um, vacate these buildings at, at this time. Um, basically what we're doing right now, we're still going through checking um, these buildings just to make sure everything's okay. Um, once we conclude what we're doing, we're going to actually cut the main um, gas line to the whole property. 
and we're going to want them to go ahead and get a third party person to come in and check these buildings out to make sure that, that they are that they are okay. Um, last night we were out here until wee hours in the morning. Uh, we had about 65 um, units that we checked uh, last night that, that, that we kind of went through. Uh, we Well, let me back up. We had 65 units that we found levels of either um, some type of gas or CO uh, in it. So we actually vacated those folks out of there. They put them in, in, a, in a temporary shelter. So we're looking at about 411 residents out here uh, in 26 buildings. Um, probably about, uh, we got uh, 244 units, 235 of them are occupied. So again, we've made, made a, 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 a very methodical search or um, inspection of each one of those. And we just found some deficiency that we just can't turn a deaf ear to. So it's all about the safety of these residents and, and keeping them um, free for anything that can happen. So um, that's kind of just a briefing on what we're doing. If you have any questions, certainly we'll be glad to answer at the end. Thank you. We have any questions? Absolutely. Um, I've been told by a couple of people that have lived here that the fire department has been called out a couple of times over the last four months. One person told me that y'all have been called out six times um, about odors and smells. Could you confirm that? Have you been out here before um, on odors and smells, possibly related to the gas? Now, we have several calls other than just call for service for, for odors and gas. There obviously are other calls for service as well. But um, looking back in 2018, we had about seven, six or seven calls for service for odor or gas. Some that we were able to, um, you know, mitigate. Um, it may have come from the stove or just from the heater. So we were able to mitigate those. The ones that we can't mitigate, what we'll do, we'll cut the uh, gas off to the whole apartment complex. So. Absolutely right. We have been out here before. Why did you not evacuate yesterday to just Well, yesterday we were only dealing with one building. And the plan was to come out this morning. Chief Holbrook and, and I had already discussed that to come out this morning and go through all of these buildings to make sure they were safe. But last night I actually received a, a, a phone call from a, a concerned citizen, a, a, a committee leader, who stated that one particular building that she was in maybe a week or so ago that she did smell gas in it. So when we came out here uh, to check it, um, that's my calling card. Okay, go ahead. When we come out, when we came out to uh, check it last night, um, we actually had two hits in that one build in that one apartment. So we made the decision last night to check that whole building. Once we checked the whole building, we discovered that we have multiple units out there that actually had some type of leak in it. So after we discovered that, I know it's late last night and it's inconvenient to people. I, I, I talked with the city manager and uh, we decided we just going to go ahead and search all the, all the business last night. So we did that until we out in the morning. And we're out here this morning finishing up. So we actually want to get ahead of it and not wait until the day. And that's what we tried to do last night. Not worry about any near, but one thing we want the public to understand, you are safe. Everything is isolated actually on the inside of these structures. So we're not concerned about any uh, surrounding buildings. Uh, uh, obviously, if somebody has issues, certainly call us. But at this time, we have no evidence to believe that there is a, a danger to anybody around uh, this, this property. Yeah, that, that'll be a, a question for housing. Uh, let me say uh, thank you all for you all for coming out too. Yes, we did give out uh, notices. Uh, we gave out instructions. We set, set up a command post at the Tiller Center. Uh, and what we have done is uh, starting last night, I was out here last night too because my concern is the safety of the residents too. And I want to do everything that I can to make sure that there's safety. The other thing I want to do is, is to make sure that the people who live out here, that they understand that we're in their, in their best interest, and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that that happens. We have identified hotel rooms 
of four people. We, uh, to date, we've identified about 40 hotel rooms, and we asked them to put it on standby. We're going to move people to suitable units just as quick as we possibly can. We also told them that we would provide lunch for them. We provided breakfast for them. We're going to provide dinner for them. We're going to provide the transportation for the people who need transportation. And anyone else, anyone else who wants to go to a hotel room or they don't have a facility to go to, uh, we will make sure that everybody is taken care of. Uh, it's an unfortunate thing that it happened, uh, but we're going to make sure that whatever we do, that we do it in the best interest of the people that actually live out here. And I think people that uh, live out here understand my position and what it is that, uh, that I try to do uh, to make sure that their safety is number one concern. Um, and uh, we will continue to keep doing that. What we have done is when people call in with gas leaks, uh, people call in that they smell gas, we sent out people to actually check it. Normally what you will find is the level of gas that they smell is not to the level of actually shutting the gas system down. If we find out that there is a problem with the stove or a problem with the water heaters, uh, we change those things out. I think most of you know that these units are 80 years old. They were built in 1939. And we've done our best to try to make sure that we keep them up to the standards as we possibly can. Uh, yeah, but you do have people that call in, yeah, and they call in frequently, too. And we want them to call in so that when they call in that we address the problem that, that is at stake. But do, you, do you think this whole thing was a problem waiting to happen? Because it's like the people we talked with said the same thing, is that there's been issues. A neighbor next to where we found, they found the two dead bodies said, he had a gas leak. It was so powerful that you know, the smell of it was so strong. It almost you know, knocked him back with his head. Well, so we it's have ongoing. Don't you think that this was? Kind of we have not been. Business. We have not been notified. If somebody notified us that there is a problem with strong gas leak. We'll shut it down. Now, our work orders does not dictate what people say. You walk into the apartment. Yeah, you're gonna smell some gas that's in there, and it's coming from. The stoves that are in there is coming from the water heaters that are in there, and we try to make sure that we take care of the problem as quickly as we possibly can, uh, and and uh, I think that we do a pretty good job with our people. Now, I agree with the city, and I agree with the fire department and the police department that we need to shut it down. We go to every unit. We're going to double check every unit to make sure that there is no problem, and, and if there is a problem, that we're going to fix it. And uh, we'll take the lead on that part of it. Are there documentation or any way we can get copies of those work orders or those problems? We, ha we do have work orders, and you can see the work orders of where people have called in. A lot of times people do not call in to our work order desk, but if they call in, gas is something that we take very seriously, not only in Allen Benedict Court, but in all of our facilities. We try to address those problems immediately. In fact, we are mandated to address the problem within 24 hours. And everybody understands that. When you say people call into your desk, do you mean the housing authority's desk? Because they call, we have a work order desk, a work order phone desk that you can call into. Everybody calls into it, and then the work orders are dispatched to the different communities. When we were talking to people out here, they said that they actually just were talking to people here in Allen Benedict Court. Is there any kind of breakdown there? Well they, do, well, they do talk to people in Allen Benedict Court because the work order desk, what happens is send the work orders over to the particular site on where it is in order for the problem to be corrected. I guess that's what I'm asking is, is there any kind of issue with oversight that you guys are having trouble with? Because if it wasn't reported from here, the main desk, I mean, you're saying you guys didn't necessarily have all the kind of complaints. Well, we have... We have complaints. There's no question about it. we have complaints. Not only in this community, but we have complaints in all of our communities. Some of them are legitimate complaints, some of them are not legitimate complaints. But you have to check out all of them because you don't know. And that's what we attempt to try to do as best that we possibly can. Will you share those documents with us today? Yeah, you can see those documents. Yeah, we'll make those documents so you can see the work orders that will call in. If they don't call work orders in, we have no way of knowing.
I'll have to check the work orders to see the numbers, uh, the date that you have. I do not have that in front of me, and I don't want to make a statement until I get something in front of me to know what you're talking about. Is this closure temporary, or is this a permanent action? At this point, what are we looking at? What, what this is, is, in my opinion, is a temporary action until we can identify if there are any other problems in the units. Now, every unit that they went into did not have a problem. And I think everybody needs to know that, but they did detect low levels of gas and uh, low levels of some type of fume. Some of it could have been sewer fume, some of it could have been gas fume. Yeah, I, know, I know you guys have a bunch of other questions, and we're going to defer. Um, do y'all have more conversations with Mr. Walker mm -hmm. at some point? A couple points I want to make clear. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excuse me. I know the chief uh, wants to make clear uh, the importance of, of reporting uh, gas leaks and, and potential CO2 issues and, 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 and never deferring only to what you think you can smell and, and how, and, uh, how, how say, you, you say that and I'm going I'm, I'm to say some things and, and okay. then we'll you know, I, I, uh, think, I think what you got to understand is when, we, when you, did, you can smell gas it's only because they put an additive in it that you smell it. When you did them with CO2 uh, you can't smell it, you can't taste it and it's, it's, you can't see it. It's, it's colorless. So you got to have a meter to go in there and so you can detect it. And just be transparent, we did detect high levels of, in certain apartments of, 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 um, of gas. Yes. Of gas. We did detect high levels. Um, so that's why we really feel the need um, to go ahead and, and just evacuate. And the question about how long well, it's as long as it takes to make sure that it is very safe um, to occupy these apartments again. Um, so once it gets to the point where they're, they're um, fixed or whatever, um, the chief now will send our crews back, our teams back in, they're rechecking to make sure. You know, we'll run the meters back through them. We'll uh, look at the property maintenance part, portion of it just to make sure that, that everything is good. Well, I'm glad you. I'm, I'm glad you. Had, because we are recommending that they put in a CO2 meter in every apartment, a, 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 a CO2 meter in every apartment. So that we are recommending it. Is that not a policy beforehand? Well, I, no, it's not a policy. Yeah. Now you you have to ha provide a smoke alarm, but it's nothing about smoke. I mean, our uh, uh, CO. It just, it just, if you use any type, and it's not only for housing, it's for anybody. If you use any type of gas in your home, you need to have a CO monitor in there. Is, is there any kind of detector for gas, though? Because, like you said, there's carbon monoxide detectors. Is there a gas detector? Well, your gas is going to give off carbon monoxide. So, did any of the residents do anything wrong by not having one? They didn't do anything wrong, no. We're not blaming any residents. They didn't do anything wrong. Yes, yes, th yes, they, they are they are on, on the scene. Everybody needs to be evacuated by the end of the day, right? Is that what we're saying? Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And until either this is reopened it, or permanent living is, is found, these people will, will have somewhere to go. Yes, and we're, we're going to support the housing authority uh, in its relocation of, of citizens. Uh, but I do, I do want to make it clear, it, it's, it's under the authority of the uh, police chief and, and the fire chief to give us a determination as to when it is safe for people to occupy this property and it's their exclusive authority. Until that is clear and, um, and um, uh, without any doubt this property will remain vacant. Uh, so I'll make that clear. So um, the, uh, the, the health and safety of the people who live here is the number one priority. We're going to make sure that we work with the housing authority to get people relocated. Everyone's working together on that right now, um, but but I do want to make clear this 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 is this is um, hopefully a temporary solution, um, but but that is not the case right now. Uh, right right now, uh, uh, it, it's under the authority of these two chiefs that this probably be closed in, until we can say without a shadow of, beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's safe for, for residents to live here, uh, and be happy to talk to any of you individually. Uh, the, the chief has indicated that whatever. 
uh, public documents or, or within our um, the, the the fire department's uh, uh, domain. He's already ha produced those, so you can have um, uh, copies of, of those as immediately as as, as possible. All right. If it's determined that it's not safe to return here ever, is there enough affordable housing to accommodate all? Of there, there there is not enough affordable housing in the United States of America, in the state of South Carolina, or in this metropolitan area. Uh, to meet the needs of citizens all across this country. That's why we've been working aggressively uh, to put many more options on the table, either uh, a, a product a, a produced by the Housing Authority, and they've been aggressive working with Hope Six and Choice Communities over the years to make some things happen. Uh, products offered through our State Housing Finance Authority, 9% 9, 9 program and 4% program. And we just recently, uh, this past month or two, uh, put out a new product that 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 we believe uh, uh, will help uh, drive more private sector capital into meeting the needs of, of citizens, but just citizens around the country, not all here in the metro, who are on the waiting list uh, for for some type of, of public housing or public assisted housing. We're talking about about tens of thousands of individuals just wanting to be here in this region. So the 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 uh, challenges nationwide are, are, are rather epic. Uh, and, and I think a, a, a real, not just a serious problem, but I think an Achilles heel for America. Yes, ma yes, sir. Can, can these residents look forward to upgrades or any kind of renovation that might well, take place? Uh, because this is an old building and uh, all the infrastructure might need to be I, I'd say this, and I, I'm not going to speak uh, for Mr. Walker and the Housing Authority. They're, 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 they're a separate agency. We've worked closely with the Housing Authority on the successful relocation of citizens from Gonzales Gardens. Uh, years ago, the same uh, at, at Enley's, Enley Homes, uh, moving people to, to high quality, uh, affordable housing throughout, throughout the region, both publicly owned and, 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 and privately owned housing. This property is incredibly old. Uh, it may indeed be one of the oldest public housing units in the country, if not the oldest. It is the third oldest in, in, the, in, the, in the country. Uh, so, if there are some systemic issues in, in, in play here that, that cannot be cured, then I'm not sure exactly what the resolution is. I do know that the here and now means that we got to get a whole lot of people around the table. We've all been talking uh, on, on, the, on the phone today to try and meet the needs of the citizens here and then continue to work together to make sure we provide high quality, mixed income, mixed use housing uh, for people all across uh, uh, this city. The people who live here are the priority right now, and that's what we're going to be working on. Where's the temporary shelter again? The, right now, the residents who were evacuated last night are, are at the CISO Tiller Center, uh, we're just, around, just around, around the corner. I'd ask you to probably grant them some privacy uh, uh, and, and, and not uh, uh, go visit them right now. But over the course of today, we're going to be working with the Housing Authority and trying to successfully relocate people to a number of different places all around, around the region. Prayerfully, um, a, a shelter is, 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 is not the next step, but some place that might be long-term temporary housing uh, for them while these issues uh, seek to be uh, rectified. And when you mentioned hotel rooms and the hospitality that you're working with, I mean, is that going to be an open-ended thing? Because you're saying they're going to have somewhere to stay as long as it's necessary. Well, they will have some place to stay as long as it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Well, with that, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So if it's something like a hotel room, right? if like it's a that. hotel room, if it's long-term care, they will have some place to stay. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about, and they don't have to worry about that. They understand that too, mm -hmm. because this is not the first time that we have done this. We did that at Cecilia Saxon. We relocated 400 families. We did mm -hmm. the same thing down at mm -hmm. Henley Homes. We re relocated 300 families. Did the same thing over in Gonzalez Gardens with 280 families. So this is not something new to us. What is new to us, though, is gas leaks, and we want to make sure that whatever the gas leak is, that we make sure that it is taken care of. We're going to have to do a whole lot really fast uh, to get people settled. Into, into quality housing. And uh, we're, we're committing our efforts to making sure it's done and, and done well. All right. If I'm a resident and I'm afraid to come back, what do you tell them? How do you reassure them? Well, I, I think it's gonna have to be, it's gonna be a, a, a crystal clear case to people. Uh, quite frankly, uh, unless a crystal clear case can be made uh, to the chief of police and the chief of the fire department, then we won't encourage people to come back. Uh, it, it's just not, it's just not going to be an option. So uh, uh, when, when when these folks are are, are convinced, 
They communicate that to the city manager. She'll communicate it uh, to the city council and the policymakers. And, 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 and we'll go from there in, in, in discussions with the housing authority. So it's going to have to be uh, a pretty solid case made to us uh, that, uh, that the actions uh, are taken here today uh, need to be um, uh, changed in some way. I think uh, I think anytime you lose uh, you, you lose life, um, it's uh, it's it's something that is uh, something that tugs on all of our hearts. Uh, so uh, I am uh, until I'm convinced otherwise. Uh, I, I do know that the, that our police agencies and our fire agencies have done everything and responded uh, accordingly the, the way that they should. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll talk about everyone else at, at, at some at some point. But yeah, I think anytime you lo you, you lose a life, uh, we, we've been we've been very clear over the way in which we've dealt with difficult situations, uh, those man-made or or those are, are natural disasters. Uh, that um, we step up and we protect the, the 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 life, health, and safety of our citizens. That's what we're doing right now. Within 24 hours of of of, of knowing about about these gas leaks. Uh, we've acted accordingly, and, and that's the way we're going to continue doing things. It's a tough situation, and it's, it's always uh, uh, difficult, uh, and I think we're, we're almost programmed sometimes to want to point fingers who did, who did what when. Uh, this, this property is old. This property is incredibly old. Uh, my opinion is, is that this property, much like similarly situated properties all across the country, are, are well beyond the useful life, and, and, and I know that Mr. Walker and the Housing Authority has aggressively pursued federal funding over the years to try and do what they're doing at, at, at Gonzales Gardens, what they did at, at, at Hanley Homes, what they did at Celia Saxon, uh, just, just around, around the corner. So, so, so those things are, are, are happening, but I think you, it, it's always, a, um, it's, it's always um, I think heart rending uh, when you have to deal with these situations. Inspections are done annually as, when they go through the department. The state gas regulator was out here yesterday inspecting the units, inspecting the outside of the units. Was that in response to what happened yesterday, though? That was just a regular check. That didn't have anything to do with what happened. Hmm. They were out here yesterday. So, so, so yeah. So, I think, the, I think the question, the answer is there's a whole lot more questions to be answered, and we're going to work hard uh, to get to the bottom of all of it. So, Thank you all so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.